Second reset was made in 1983 with the set and costumes by Bob Rauschenberg and music commissioned for the dance by Laurie Anderson. And I work in two phases. One is developing the basic material, and two is uh, taking that basic material and organizing it in such a way that it becomes choreography. The, the dancing is very based on the vertical and horizontal facts of the body and its subdivisions of, of those uh, lines into 45 degree, 90 degree angles. One of the... Um, focuses, I say foci, on this material is to, on my part, was to keep it simple. We've been known, to, we've been called lushly complex. I thought this one ought to be geometrically simple. This material was then taken into its second phase, was, which was to, to give the dancers the instructions to, to um, pull, the, pull the movement, adhering to the spatial directions, and to include the idea of visibility and invisibility, working with visibility and invisibility. That's a performance idea. And I, it's a thought about that one could stand in the center of the stage and be invisible. It's an idea about performance that um, has shown up in my work over the years. <laughs> work with visibility and invisibility. You will see people standing still with their backs to the audience when we run this and, and, and they're invisible. Or people exiting by lying down on the floor, dropping out into, into invisibility. And of course the whole play with the, with the wings. Bob, seeing all the energy that was going on in, in the um, wings, uh, these little black things I had hung up in my studio, um, a studio being too narrow to accommodate the wings and the size of the dance, so that we were always piling it up against the wall and bursting out from the wall. So seeing that energy, one dancer suggested that we should just stack beer cans up there so that when we exited there would be all this uh, continued rumble. He made transparent, Bob made transparent wings, which we have in performance. These are opaque. <laughs> They're demonstrating to you the process of how we put together the material. They are extemporizing on the basic material in small increments, repeating it until they can memorize it, and then um, going forward. It looks rather simple here. In fact, when we began working on it, first I spent about a week having to marshal them back out of the center of the space. It's not an ordinary thing for a dancer to stay on the edge of the stage. The stage is designed, the seating is designed for people to work in the center. Keep it simple, work with visibility and invisibility, act on instinct, and work with the process of lining up, which is an early uh, dance in, in the company repertory that we're familiar with, which has to do with, with um, continuing to work with lines, vertical and horizontal. I have two stories that go with the period of making this dance. One was, hailing a yellow taxi in New York City and it driving up and seeing a window open in the back and, 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 and picturing myself going through that window head first into the back seat <laughs> and catching myself in the nick of time. Because if you're working with instincts, it happens before you <laughs> have an opportunity for counsel. <laughs> And the second one was, luckily I was on the other side of the street, University Place and uh, about 10th Street, New York City, and there is a man running down the street, carrying a, holding a broom above his head, chasing another man with a gun. Now their roles are reversed. Obviously, the 
first guy's out of bullets, and the second guy's got a better weapon now. And I thought if I was over there, I would have mixed into it. Long time no see. Long time no see. Long, long time no see. Long, long, long.
all one second time around. Thank you. 